Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There is a spiritual battle all around us. And unless as believers in these end times we guard our hearts, and unless as believers in these end times we trust and we believe in God, we fast, we pray, we live for Him, we are in deep trouble. You see, one of the things that I've noticed, especially here, and, and, and God convicts me a lot. I don't know if you've seen me in the last year, but I've grown up a lot. I, so many childish things. I've grown up a lot. And I think that as the years are going to keep on passing, I'm going to grow up a lot more because I have a lot more to grow up on. And I like that. I love that. I love that my Messiah can break me, just as I believe in Jeremiah it speaks of uh, the potter and the clay. I, I love it when my Messiah breaks me and makes me know. Because there's so many imperfections in our walk, in our lives, in my life, in our life. And I want to get to that point that, that, that when I walk down the street, or when I, when I say a oh, God bless you, or, or, or when I enter into a place that people can just say what does that man have that I don't even have to speak a word and they automatically know that I'm a disciple of God by my way of talking by my way of loving by charity I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you today but there is a unbelief problem in the body of God there's a problem with unbelief and unbelief is running rampant in the body there's so much unbelief Nowadays, people believe more in fallen angels, as an example, than they do in the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm not saying that's wrong to believe that, that in fallen angels, because I believe the same thing. I believe in all of those things. But I'm just giving you an example. Nowadays, people emphasize tongues, for example, as, as the way to be. But there's no love, there's no charity. I don't know if you know what I'm trying to tell you today, but it's time for the body of Christ to stop believing the things of the world and start believing the things of God. And even if the things that we're learning that are things that are impacting us in this world, how can we overcome those things if we're not primary in our foundation, which is Christ in the Word of God? How can we do these things? How can we teach on fallen angels, which I make videos on, if I'm not in one communion with God because there's spiritual attacks that come when you do that. How can I speak on Freemasons if I'm not founded in the Word of God and I'm not having a, a daily communion with God? Living in a world on YouTube where you have believers that claim to be believers but are some of the most rude people that you've ever encountered in your entire life that say, I'm cursing your family, I'm cursing your wife, I'm cursing your child, I'm praying that you die in the name of Yahweh. Are, 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 is it me or or, or, or or do we not need a relationship with God now more than ever and we do because spiritual attacks will come Ephesians 6 12 lets us know the spiritual attacks will come the spiritual attacks are coming but the problem is me and you go through something that the disciples went through that the apostles went through and that is we go through periods of times when we get a little bit comfortable, we stop fasting, we stop praying, we stop seeking His kingdom, we start seeking things that are not of God, listening to music that is not of God, entertained with things that are not of God. And there's a time for everything. But you have to understand that number one in your life comes the Messiah. Because if He's not number one in your life, then when the spiritual attacks come, they will sink you, my friend. If you don't have the armor of God on, when the spiritual attacks come, you are in trouble, my friend. But praise God that we have a Messiah. That even when we're in trouble, He steps up to the plate. He corrects us, and He still takes care of the problem. Let's go to Mark 9, my brothers and sisters. Mark 9, hallelujah, praise the living God. And this is just something God gave me today, this afternoon, to convict me. And there's nothing better than us admitting when God convicts us. See, we live in a day and age that nobody can say, Oh man, God convicted me. We, we want to be so right. 
get over yourself. Get over yourself. And let's start seeking God in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Mark 9, 17 through 29. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who was a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. And look at this. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Wait a minute. Something's wrong here. <laughs> the disciples that had followed him. The disciples that had been with them. Seen the miracles of God. Seen the life we follow the examples of, of, of the Messiah in the scriptures, but they actually saw him lividly, face to face. Saw him praying at nighttime. Saw him loving when he didn't have to love. Saw him rebuking when people said, oh, you're not loving enough. He would rebuke people. He would cast out demons. He would heal the sick. And they saw how he lived face to face. Me and you don't. Yet when they took to him a boy, a little boy who was foaming from the mouth. They could not cast that spirit out. Look what Jesus said. And he's saying that to us today. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed and foaming at the mouth. Praise the living name of God. Hallelujah. Because he is the, the king of kings. Hallelujah. And demons tremble because he is that powerful. He is that awesome. So he asked his father. How long has this been happening to him? And he said from childhood. And often he has thrown him in both into fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So we have a child who is undergoing attacks from the enemy, who is being tormented by the enemy. And you have a father who is concerned that his son is being tormented by the enemy. They take him to a disciple and the disciple tries to do the works of God and they cannot. So they end up taking him to the Messiah and the Messiah is doing the work. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. We're dealing with unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit and said to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why would, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. There was a problem there. There was an unbelief problem there. There was a lack of direction, of understanding the directions of God there. there. There was no prayer there. There was no fasting there. And this was the disciples who saw him on a daily basis. How much more now is that not impacting the church? My brothers and sisters, I have had circumstances, my brothers and sisters, experiences with occult demons that are nothing compared to some of yours but I know what it is like to enter into a place and automatically feel the occult presence of Satan in the place I've seen situations where I've entered my brother's home and uh, my brother's uh, uh, my brother couldn't get out of bed the whole day he was laying in that bed all day because he had pain he had trouble he had anxiety he could not get out of that bed and as soon as I would walk in that home I remember it clearly. As soon as I drove into his driveway, I said, Father, I am nothing without you. 
Father, I repent of all my sins, and I ask that as I go in there today, you move as you want to move, and you do the works that you want to do. I don't want my unbelief to get in the way. And I remember going into his bedroom, and I remember seeing him in the bed, and I remember hugging him at that moment, and hugging him, and he was like, hi, Tally, I love you. And I said, Billy, I love you too. And we prayed together, and I said, Jesus can do all things. All things. And although I know I was entering into a homosexual household, and although I know that I was entering into a place where there were demons, I know that when I entered into that place, it wasn't just me entering alone, praise the living God, hallelujah. It was the most high entering with me there in that place, and there were angels fighting, and there were, uh, the, and there were angels of God fighting on my behalf. Because when you have the power of God, working in your life when you follow his instructions when you fast when you pray when you seek his kingdom this is not about you going to seminary and, and learning all the bible scriptures this is not about you saying things in the perfect way this is about you walking with him because when you walk with him in one accord when you walk with him he is there with you hallelujah praise the living god He's an awesome Messiah. Praise the beautiful name of God. Praise the beautiful name of God for His power has delivered us from sin, delivered us from the temptations of this world. And we are so unbelieving. We believe more in the things of the world than we do in the things of God. We're so unbelieving, Father. May we come to the place that we understand that you've called us to cast out demons. You've called us to pray for people that are sick so they may be healed. You've called us to transform anywhere that we go in. Now therefore, says the Lord, Joel 2, 12 forward. Hallelujah. Turn to me with all of your heart. With fasting and with weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent. And leave a blessing behind them. A great offering. A drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, a nursing babies, let the bridegroom come out of his chamber, and the bride come from her dressing room. Rend your heart, my brother. Rend your heart. Stop worrying about the garments. Rend your heart. May God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm going to leave it at that. Because. I'm feeling the presence of God, man. I don't even know how to describe this to you. But. When the presence of God comes in you. Miracles happen. I've seen my sister heal from cancer. I've seen my leg. My left leg, which had a tumor. Which I almost couldn't walk and be healed I've seen this man that's preaching to you today this wretched of a man here that flawed human being be saved from the world how can I have unbelief how can I unbelieve do I not know that he paid the price on the cross for my sins do I, under, do I not understand that he is still the king of kings? Do I not understand that he is the most high? That he has never changed? Unbelieving believers. Who worship him with lips. Who honor them with their dress. To, who honor him with saying this name right or that name right. But their heart is far from him. Turn to Jesus Christ today, my brothers and sisters. I felt from the Lord to make this video. And it's ministering to me more than most of you probably. Hallelujah. I'm hearing tears. The Lord of the living King, the Messiah, the worthy Lamb of God. Come on, my friend. Stop worshiping God right there where you're at. The King of Kings. Hallelujah. Who tells the sun who come out in the morning and the moon to come out at night. 
who tells the waves to stay there in the edge of the beach who tells the tornadoes where to go oh let's stop giving Satan so much credit my brothers and sisters God knew all of the deceptions that were coming God knew all of this before it happened it's not it may surprise you it may bring you fear but it doesn't surprise God it may cause you to say, oh, what's going to happen on this day? Oh, this, there's a chemtrail here. There's a problem there. It may surprise you, but his word predicted it. It may surprise you, but in Revelation, at the end of the book of Revelation, we see that we win. Unbelieving believers, let's turn back to God, to what matters, to that first love, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you, brothers and sisters. May God bless you, brothers and sisters.